Good morning there and welcome back. So this is the second unit of our course, Mathematical Foundation of Robotics. So this is specially made for senior undergraduate and postgraduate students, including those who are doing research in this area. And in this unit, we are going to talk about humanoid robots, how to model them. Okay. And in that context, um, we will take a number of examples uh, like Bexter type humanoid robot and uh, now type humanoid robot. Uh, first, let us discuss about Bexter type of humanoid robot, which is also incidentally a cobot, okay, developed by uh, Rethink Robotics, which is a startup. Although the startup failed, the many concepts of this robot are uh, great concepts. That's why uh, we need to, um, I think that it will be a good idea to uh, study uh, this kind of humanoid robot, how to model. Because this, uh, this strategy of modeling will be or can be extended uh, to any other humanoid robots. Now, if you ask question that uh, whether the modeling of humanoid robot is entirely different than what we have so far studied, the answer is no. Okay. Uh, the same dinovet hartenberg notation we will use the same kind of uh, linear algebra matrix uh, uh, representation of the um, links will be used. But they are different also because mostly the humanoid robots like Bexter type humanoid robot, um, they are called redundant robot. Okay. Now what is redundancy? You know, in 3D space you can have uh, how many degrees of freedom? We have already told you. Suppose I have a um, 3D space x, y, and z, and say I have a um, object like this. Okay. So, how many degrees of freedom this object has? It has. 6 degrees of freedom, right? 3 translation, that means it requires th uh, 6 independent coordinates to completely specify it. And to capture this kind of object with any orientation, you require at least 6 degrees of freedom robot, okay? So that's the meaning of uh, degrees of freedom, as you know. Um, now, what is 7 degrees of freedom, 8 degrees of freedom? Because in, in 3D orthogonal coordinate system, more than 6 degrees of freedom geometrically um, cannot exist. But why? Because other, say, I have a 7 degrees of freedom robot, uh, but still there will be only 6 independent parameters to completely specify. Then what additional degrees um, of freedom will give? The additional degrees of freedom will give the additional uh, mobility. So that's why I like the term degrees of uh, mobility beyond 6 degrees of freedom. Degrees of mobility is the term which I like okay, because it, it makes sense. Okay. Uh, say I have a robot having 6 degrees of freedom, 1, 2, 3, four, five, say serial kinematic chain, one, two, three, four, five, say six, I have this kind of, some kind of robot, right? Now, if I uh, want to, so, uh, so this kind of robot will be able to actually um, capture uh, any 3D objects placed in, um, in, uh, in an unconstrained way. Now, if I increase additional degrees, what they are meaning. Say I have another, okay, I have another two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now eight joints I have made and assuming that each joint is giving you, um, because joints are rotated by motor, okay, each joint is giving you um, some kind of degrees of freedom. So, they, uh, they will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, eight 
degrees of freedom i normally do not agree with this because uh, it's uh, because <coughs> still in 3d coordinate system it requires uh, six degrees of freedom okay it has six degrees of freedom meaning that that uh, for describing position and orientation of the end effector you still require six independent coordinates so what about two additional uh, degrees of freedom i should call them degrees of mobility because those uh, parameters say uh, it has now theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 theta 5 theta 6 theta 7 theta 8 right so <clears throat> still there will be six independent uh, generalized coordinate okay and other say theta 1 to theta 6 and uh, theta 7 theta 8 they will be some kind of combination of other uh, six uh, orientation or angles that is what i mean about um, why they are not degrees of freedom because they are not independent they are dependent parameter okay so it is better to call eight instead of eight degrees of freedom six degrees of freedom robot with two degrees of mobility okay additional mobility okay so they give the dexterity okay dexterity you see we have our fingers okay while uh, our hand uh, i don't know how, how many degrees of freedom 1 Uh, two, two is here. Three, four, five, six, six degrees of freedom, if we assume roughly. But additionally, we have fingers. Each finger has some joint, and some of them can move independently. But they are not adding degrees of freedom. What they are adding, they are adding dexterity because now my hands are more mobile and can uh, grasp objects more. Um, convenient way oh, this is a, this is called dexterity okay so dextrous robot uh, we call if robot has large number of degrees of freedom dexterity so it is giving the additional degrees of mobility is giving the dexterity to the structure okay so most of the human eye robot you see they are dextrous in nature okay so puma robot is it dextrous no because it it requires only uh, it, it has only 6 degrees of freedom and most of the in that sense most on the industrial robot they have just required whatever degrees of freedom required they have because putting additional joint creates lots of problem in terms of control in terms of cost uh, in, you'll have to put sensors uh, internal sensors so they are costly now you need to understand that there are two classes of robot one what we have studied they are called industrial robot they are doing fantastic job in the industry in terms of precision and accuracy okay for example they are uh, deployed for very um, uh, accurately uh, putting chips to the motherboard okay or they are welding making welding in a, a aircraft uh, wing okay very precisely so precision is the main repeatability precision there are very high quality in those kinds of robot okay and they are main for some specific task which is very difficult to do by uh, us for example um, say this is a trajectory yeah. or i am writing this this is a trajectory right Do you know that in spite of my full effort, in my lifetime I will not write exactly this R. I will write some R, which will be different. If you so, uh, if you see microscopically, there will be some difference. So as many times I will write R, okay, that many times unique uh, trajectory will be there, and that's the uh, characteristic feature of human, right? You see, if you just see my fingertip. Okay, uh, and in in a mic microscopically, if you see that that there, there, there are some vibrations. Okay, why it is happening? Maybe <laughs> the way uh, we have a we have a heart inside, right? We have a we have a heart which is a pump. Okay, which is actually uh, making rhythmic motion. Then we have many other um, internal muscles 
our stomach is moving, our uh, all kind of uh, movements are there inside our uh, body. We are breathing, so lung is actually moving. So all this dynamic system is not allowing us precisely to hold my fingertip. It is actually, in an exaggerated way, I'm saying it is vibrating. Okay? So with that kind of structure, it is very difficult to maintain high accuracy. And precisely for that, we have designed industrial robot. Robot is very good for that. Uh, uh, for example, in case of robot, if we have high uh, precision robot, high ac robot having high accuracy, we can uh, make this trajectory followed by the robot exactly the same way, maybe 1,000 times or 10,000 times, which I will not be able to do. Uh, I, I, I will only be able to do only once. Okay. I can repeat. You see, it's a little bit different. A little bit different. Huh? So you understand, right? So we are not in that sense, very precise, okay? And, uh, but still, we do lo all kind of jobs we do. Robot can do only uh, some jobs, right, for which, in, I mean, industrial robot, can do only some kind of jobs for which we have designed them. But we can do so many uh, jobs, um, say, picking and placing, writing, I am writing, uh, this very complicated structure I am making. Only thing is, I will not be able to repeat. Okay? No, I will not be able to repeat exactly the same trajectory. That's the beauty, right? But it doesn't um, make any difficulties in doing daily jobs. So precisely, um, the human and robots also has similar kind of uh, inaccuracies, but they can do a lot of, take the example of, they can do lots of jobs, okay. Take the example of Bextar. Uh, as I told you, although Rethink Robotics was, a, as a startup, it was a failure, but uh, many successful concept it gave. It is exactly, if, if I just skip the uh, Bextar um, gripper, you will see uh, sometimes it is vibrating like that. So it doesn't have a very costly uh, actuator the motto kind of thing, right? It doesn't have very costly transmission system, okay? But that does not deter uh, Baxter robot uh, to do many jobs which uh, human does in, uh, in terms of pick and place, in terms of doing some, uh, um, taking hand somewhere, doing some job without much programming, right? It memorizes and then you ask it to do uh, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, it can do those kind of jobs. So as a, that's why it is also called cobot. As a, in a collaborative manner, it can just stay with us and can act as a tool. You understand the basic difference between humanoid robots and the industrial robot? They are not very precise. They are not supposed to be. They are supposed to be cheaper. They are supposed to be working with uh, with human in a collaborative way. That's why they call cobot, uh, collaborative robot, okay? So, uh, and this kind of robot normally has redundancy. Redundancy means uh, it has um, more degrees of uh, freedom or degrees of mobility, okay? Um, for example, Be Baxter has, um, one degrees of mobility and six degrees of freedom. That means total seven degrees of freedom. Okay, uh, because all books are using the term degrees of freedom, but you should know that, uh, the concept, that it is still having six degrees of freedom and one degrees of mobility. And by virtue of that, it has additional dexterity. You see, the way I can, uh, I have just um, wrapped the robot around, around my uh, body, right? I cannot do it with, uh, Puma or some other industrial robot because they do not have uh, redundancy as such uh, and they are not uh, that much dexterous. And if you can see, uh, my uh, um, research scholars are uh, working with the robot and they are uh, having extremely, um, they are safe. Okay, otherwise I won't allow students to, to be so near, uh, coming so near to the robot. But it will not hurt. Okay, 
the the structure of the robot the actuators of the robot are such that those kind of qualities like human it has okay so i i already told you why redundancy is required because to put additional dexterity why we require fingers when all six degrees of freedom are required um, or necessary six degrees of freedom are there for grasping an object because it gives additional dexterity we can grasp any surface any size shape um, with different texture okay we can just um, grasp okay <clears throat> now how to so having um, told some story about uh, human robot especially the dexter robot you can see i can put the robot i can bring the robot anywhere and i want say this is a uh, this is some kind of um, object which is dangerous i do not want to um, hold that object right i will bring the robot i will uh, open the uh, gripper close uh, and i will make it grasp and then take the robot somewhere uh, and drop it there okay and in that process if all the joint angles are memorized the robot can do the similar kind of um, dirty objects uh, cleaning okay as many number of times as it requires okay very simple right uh, you don't require a programmer okay but of course when we are talking about creating intelligence to this kind of uh, robot then we need uh, we are actually doing research on that how intelligently robot can grasp seeing object it can grasp okay so that's an other story but it has this kind of rudimentary applications as well okay so we are that's why we are going to understand uh, how to model vector type of robot which is having redundancy okay but before that let us uh, tell a little bit more about the specification of the robot okay performance wise specification you see it has a rated payload of 2.3 kg okay uh, rated payload means with that payload sufficient accurate uh, accuracy you will be able to get okay and safety you, you will be able to get um, but some additional payload is possible also in some limited workspace means you see like as i told you human robot right so if i am having an object if i need to grasp it from here so from here i will not be able to um, carry the load uh, the amount of load which if some object is here i'll be able to carry okay so in some limited workspace so in some i have a workspace right where i can reach okay and even in that workspace like human who uh, requires different kind of Uh, force uh, for holding that object baxter also can do the same thing okay so in a convenient uh, work space it can it may carry more than uh, 2.3 kg but normally 2.3 kg in in, in uh, all the work space it will be able to carry that's why it is called rated payload then it has a maximum speed with no payload 1 meter per second and maximum speed with the rated payload is 0.6 cm per second 6 cm per second you can see per second okay 0.6 cm uh, 0.6 meter sorry 0.6 meter 60 cm hmm? then electrical connection supply voltage 120 volt ac supply is required Okay, otherwise you need uh, if you have dc supply then you will need to have a converter okay then rated current it consumes 6 amperes current okay then uh, input output connection it has one ethernet jack one uh, usb uh, type jack uh, usb a type jack okay and one 15 pin d sub with plc compliant connection that is uh, programmable logic controller Uh, also can be connected uh, through programming uh, with this kind of robot which is plc is <coughs> very much uh, useful in uh, industry okay as you know if you have 
several devices, several sensors, several actuators, then you can make a um, make a kind of uh, program uh, so that sequentially your objective or work can be done. There are techniques for that, you know, you have um, ladder logic diagram and all kind of thing, okay. Uh, PLC programming uh, is a very interesting area, okay. So with PLC, uh, it can be connected, okay. Then environmental issues, okay. Uh, protection classification IP50, that means uh, it's a uh, protocol uh, for protection, okay. It will uh, follow that, that means it will not harm uh, even some industrial robot has a, a bad reputation of even killing uh, people accidentally, right? Because that's why safety feature has to be maintained. You cannot go very near uh, to the um, industrial robot when they are in action, okay? But in case of uh, this kind of Baxter type on uh, robot, they are quite gentle, right, in that regard. They will not harm you. An operating temperature is 0 to 40 degrees centigrade, which is quite uh, good, uh, quite high, and you, know, you don't require special uh, AC uh, for um, for maintaining uh, the external robot, okay? Then about physical specification, that means what is his height, weight, all kind of things. So it weigh 90, uh, is, uh, height is 93.98 centimeters. You have seen, huh? it's quite, you can see huh? from floor, it is uh, more than me, it's taller than me. Huh? So, uh, almost a meter huh? without, uh, without optional pedestal. We have a pedestal, that's why it is, uh, height is more. Uh, robot height with optional pedestal is actually 1.78 meter to 1.9 meter, depending on adjustable pedestal setting. Huh? So without pedestal is this, and with optional pedestal, this is what the height, okay? Arm length of the end effector is 1.04 meter or 104 centimeter. Torso mounting plate diameter is 33.85 centimeter for, for mounting on table, okay? So this is the torso. Yeah, the torso, okay. Then body weight without pedestal, 75 kg, just like a human. Eh? Uh, then it has degrees of freedom, uh, seven per arm, seven degrees of freedom, roughly calling degrees of freedom, let us accept it, including degrees of mobility, okay. And since it has two arms, so two arms put together has 14 degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, end effector means, you know, what is attached at the gripper. It has a vacuum cup gripper with interchangeable cups so that it can, using vacuum, it can uh, grasp object uh, having um, some special texture, okay. Then also, it has electrical parallel gripper with interchangeable fingers we have this kind of uh, gripper, okay. And user adjustable finger tips also is possible, okay. And onboard computer, of course, is uh, using uh, Intel Core i7 computer, right, with eight uh, um, megabyte, 3.4 gigahertz processor with HD 4000 graphics, okay, 4 GB, 1600, uh, megahertz DDR3 memory, okay, and 128 uh, gigabyte solid state hard drive. So these are your computational specification, what uh, the planning level computer, uh, the uh, Baxter has, okay. And for vision-based Baxter research, uh, you may require more powerful computer. In fact, you can connect it with a uh, GPU server, which we are doing. Uh, if you require object detection, object um, recognition, all kind of uh, uh, mem uh, um, uh, memory-oriented uh, 
specifications if you need you may add uh, your convenient computational devices with the desktop but this is minimum required uh, for solving uh, trajectory planning uh, inverse kinematics uh, all kind of problems okay and then it has camera also okay um, two camera inbuilt cameras are there with uh, tw um, 1280 cross 800 pixel 640 uh, cross 400 pixel effective resolution with a uh, 30 frame per second uh, uh, frame rate okay. frame rate and 1.2 mm focal length okay so some these are some of the intrinsic uh, parameters okay 1.2 mm uh, focal length and the animated face flat screen has a resolution of uh, 1024 cross 600 pixels right so so these are all so this uh, we are talking about this huh? that animated face flat now having um, talked about um, the some story about baxter which is a human and robot um, and collaborative robot collaborative human and robot we will talk about the baxter anatomy okay or onukul anatomy uh, that will be done uh, we'll start from here in the next class thank you for your attention and stay tuned next class will be very very interesting because you will be knowing uh, internal detail of Baxter Watt.